In the next video I'm going to take you through all the different types of screws that I use and what I take out to pretty much every job. But before we go down that route, I wanted to explain the different drive types that you're likely to run into and what I've personally settled on for pretty much all of my screws. Hiya folks, welcome back to the workshop. Forget about politics, religion, Brexit, whatever. If you want to start an argument in the maker community, just ask a bunch of people what their favorite types of screws are. As far as I'm concerned from a UK perspective, there's only really two types of screws that I ever use, and I can assure you they're not Phillips. And for that to make a bit more sense, we need to have a little history lesson about screws. There are a lot of different screw drive systems out there, but to keep things simple, I'm just gonna talk about the seven most common ones that you're likely to run into. So pretty much from when screw threads have first existed, people have thought, well, how are you going to turn the head of the screw? And one of the most logical things to do is just cut a slot in the top of the screw head. And this green little bit here is my pretend kind of screwdriver thing. And if you imagine when you turn your screwdriver, what it effectively does, it puts force onto the sides of the slot around here and around here. So you've basically got two points of contact on the screw head. Now obviously if you're using a slotted head screw you should try and use a screwdriver that actually fits a slot properly and by having a screwdriver that fits a slot properly you're basically extending the load distribution across here and across here so it gives you a bigger surface area that is acting on the actual slot. But Effectively, it is basically just two points of contact here and here. So the next logical step from there was to cut another slot perpendicular to your first slot to create a crosshead screw. The first big innovation of the 20th century came about all the way back in 1908 when Peter Robertson invented the Robertson drive. Again, this gives four points of contact or four points where the load of turning the screw is transferring over onto the screw head. So in this case, here, 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 and here. The other big advantage of the Robertson, though, is that the screwdriver bits themselves are slightly tapered. So it means that you get quite a good transfer of force all the way around the screw head and you'll find if you try Robertson screws it feels like a really positive fit between the screwdriver and the screw but you've still just got four points of force transfer. The two big disadvantages with Robertson though is that they're not self-centering and they're only used by a tiny fraction of people in the UK. I'm not saying don't use them, if it was a choice between Robertson or Hex I would pick Robertson any day, but for me personally I think better alternatives have been developed now. Then around 30 years later, around 1934, the Phillips screw head was born. It was actually invented by a guy called John P. Thompson, but he sold his design onto Henry Phillips and the Phillips Screw Company was born. Again, we've got four points of force transfer onto the head of the screw. So here, 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 and here. And the Phillips screws also had the advantage as well that there's a slight taper on the head of the screwdriver bit, which means that there's a bit more flexibility in terms of using the same screwdriver for different size screws but we've still essentially just got four points of force transfer. A couple of years after that, in 1936, the hex head was developed by Bauer and Schauerte. I'm gonna brush over that, but the hex head does have the advantage that we're now putting six points of contact onto the screw head. The hex head screws are still used today in flat pack furniture, but really they're being overtaken by Torx now, which we'll come to a little bit later on. The next big development was then in 1962, when GKN screws and fasteners developed the Posi Drive system. Posi Drive look exactly like Phillips screws, except we've got these little markings here 
at 45 degrees to the main cross and that's how you know it's a posi drive screw. It's actually very different to a Phillips screw. And the big difference is that in addition to the cross that you would have on a Phillips screw, we've now got these extra four points of contact between the screwdriver and the screw. It's a bit misleading with having these uh, little lines here. Those lines don't really do anything other than signify that it's a posi drive screw. So if I just hide those out the road, but we've got these little grooves in the corner here at 45 degrees to the main cross. And of course, what that means when you turn the screwdriver, we've now got points of contact here, 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 and here plus points of contact here, 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 and here. So technically with a posi drive screw, you've got eight points of force transfer. Now, admittedly, the force transfer on the little flutes around the middle of the screw have a very small surface area, but it does make a significant difference. And that's why posi drive screws are much less likely to come out than Phillips screws. And then finally, in 1967, the Torx drive was invented by Camcar Textron. The Torx drive only has six points of contact, so not as much as the Posi drive, but the big difference is that we've got those points of contact over a much bigger surface area. So effectively, when you're turning a Torx screw, you're getting a really high surface area of load transfer in six points around the screw head. So even with six points of force transfer, as opposed to the eight that a posi drive screw has, it does mean that you can get much higher torque out of a torque screw, funnily enough. The disadvantage though, is that a torque screwdriver bit isn't tapered in the same way that a posi drive bit is tapered. So whereas a posi two or PZ2 screwdriver bit will work with a whole range of screws from tiny little screws up to really quite big screws, With Torx, you have to be much more particular to make sure you've got the correct size bit for the screw that you're using. Because of the self-centering nature of posi drive bits as well, you find that once a screw is on the end of the bit, it's much less likely to fall off the bit while you're moving the screw around. In my experience, that's not the case with Torx screws, and that can cause some problems in some situations. So for me, I prefer to use PosiDrive for the vast majority of situations. They're by far the most common screw that you're likely to run into in Europe and they offer a great balance between self-centering, bit grip and torque. A standard PZ2 bit will fit pretty much everything that I use on a daily basis from little cabinet hinge screws all the way through to bigger screws that I use for attaching big things onto walls. If I'm doing a lot of fastening that needs a higher level of torque, then Torx screws are awesome. But in all honesty, for the sort of work that I do, in 99% of situations, PosiDrive works absolutely fine. They grip the screw head really well as long as you're using good quality screws and good quality bits. And for me, if you're using them in an impact driver, they never come out. One important thing to remember with PosiDrive screws is that a Phillips bit will fit in a posi drive screw, but you can't use a posi drive bit in a Phillips screw. The little flutes on a posi drive bit just don't engage properly with the head of a Phillips screw, and hence my general hatred of Phillips screws, since it means hunting around for an obsolete screwdriver. Of course, there are situations where you're gonna run into other drive types, especially hex headed bolts for bigger fixings, hex sockets on conformat screws, and I even sometimes use Robertson Drive for my pocket screws. You use whatever type of screw you want to use that's easily available in your part of the world. All I would say is if you're building something for a customer, 
that might need to be taken apart or adjusted at a later date, then do try and use screws that will work with screwdrivers that the customer is likely to have in their house. Just because you have a full set of Torx tamper resistant screwdrivers doesn't mean your customer does. And if you're in the UK and you have to buy just one good screwdriver, make it a Posi 2. With all of that out the road, next time I'm going to take you through all of the screws that I use on a daily basis that I carry around with me all the time. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. For now, take care folks and I shall see you next time. Bye. -bye.